calls us. That's how we meet God. God calls us. It's not that we go looking, right? That we can, by our own smartness, pin down the divine and know exactly when and where we can hold him to account and get all of our answers. If you've tried that, you know that's not actually how things work. God calls us. It's not that we know the right formula and that if we check off all the boxes and we climb the ladder rung by rung and we do all the right things, we're going to arrive in the presence of God. We usually miss about the third rung, and it turns out that ladder isn't even propped up to heaven anyhow. God calls us. God, you have searched me and known me. That's how it always works works again and again God comes and finds us doesn't he God does not have backwaters that don't matter to him God does not have places where we can go and be invisible because we either don't matter or because we are so God forsaken that's not how God works even the darkness is light to God the ends of the earth are just right over there for God there's nowhere we can go that is unimportant enough, that doesn't matter enough, that is so beyond hope. God is already there. God is already finding us. And when God finds us, God knows us. You have searched me and you have known me. All my sitting down and rising up, that TV show I put on and fall asleep to every night, the words that are going to come out my mouth that I'm proud of and the words that are coming out my mouth that I'm not so proud of, you know them all. God knows us. Knows Samuel by name. Samuel knows all of those things about us. And then God knows us chiefly by the name God has given us, right? Last week, Pastor Tim had us write on our index cards all the names we've got, the ones that our mom called us when we were three, the ones that the kids called us at school, the ones that we call ourselves at night when we can't sleep, the ones we're proud of, the titles. And then we turned it sideways and we scribbled beloved as boldly as we could because that is what God does with us. God calls us. He finds us and then he knows us. He walks into our lives like he does there with Nathaniel, like he does with Samuel, stands right there in his presence. And it's amazing. And when God calls us, there's a call. And I think that's what our texts are pointing us to this morning, is that we are invited to listen. To, not just to hear, but to listen. And you know if you have been trying to get something important across to someone, you know when they say, yeah, I heard you. That's almost a guarantee that they weren't listening, right? I know when those words come out of my mouth, my kids say, did your mom really? Let me repeat it again, because I don't think you're reacting appropriately to what I said. Hearing and listening aren't quite the same thing, and we are invited to listen. God calls us. Not just some people, not just the right people or the fancy people or the people who think they can do it. God calls us, you and me, and, and each one that God knows and comes and finds, God calls. It's like... Uh, when you meet someone and you know that this is the one, and you say, will you marry me? The love that I have for you, I want it to change your life. I want it to throw everything up on end, and all the plans are going to be different now because of that. And that's what God says to us. My love is so amazing that now let's change your life. So God calls you. How do you listen? Do you listen? I have days that I listen well and days that I don't, so I imagine that that's true of all of us. But God calls us. And there are some different ways that we might listen. Sometimes if we are doing well, we listen by sleeping in the places that God is going to show up. Samuel is there sleeping at the foot of the ark, kind of snuggled up to the presence of God just waiting. And even though I think probably they have a boy doing it exactly because it doesn't seem likely, right? The word of the Lord is rare. Ask, send a kid. That's what we do. And God says, ooh, I'll show you. 
right? But if we are sleeping in the places that God shows up there all the time, we are starting to equip ourselves to listen, right? We do well when we soak in Scripture. If you have a discipline that takes you into Scripture again and again, or, you know, with phones and apps these days, it doesn't take you into Scripture. It sends Scripture into your daily life, and it goes ding, and you pick it up, and you say, ah, right, it's time to do this. When we soak in the words of God, and we read them again and again, we start to recognize what that voice sounds like. That's one way that we can sleep there in the temple. Or maybe it's breathing prayer. And I have never once had sort of concerted will and discipline be the thing that teaches me to breathe in prayer. Usually it's desperation. It's that week that is so very difficult that I have to pray every five minutes to get through the next five minutes. And slowly that starts to shape you, doesn't it? When this little thing Oh, wait, that matters to God. And that conversation, that matters to God. And this pumping gas, that matters. Okay, all of these places are places where God might be. That's a way that we can sleep in the temple. Or maybe it's jumping into service and into the things that God calls us to do to love our neighbors, not just with feelings or thoughts, but with actions. And when we make those habits repeated and regular, over and over and over, we do the things that God says, here's what our family does, we start to become like the family. And we start to see when Jesus said, when you do this for the least of these, it was for me, we start to actually be able to see Jesus. He's been there the whole time, but sometimes we need that practice. So I think one of the questions that scripture has for us this morning is, since God is calling you, do you have a way to listen? Do you have a practice that can shape you over and over and over? Maybe it's even the same Bible verse. Maybe it's even the same words of a prayer your mother taught you or that you picked up off the internet, wherever it came from. Maybe it is the same not-so-random act of kindness again and again, day in and day out, that doesn't seem to be changing the world at all, but shifts the voices in your own head and makes room for the voice of God when we listen, we hear that God is calling us. So that's one way that we can listen, by, by sleeping in the temple. But of course, if you um, are like me, you probably know that sometimes we listen only because God, well, God nags us, and God is persistent. Sometimes God is that annoying voice in the middle of the night, shaking you awake three and four times before you finally say, What? I think of it sometimes, I, I, that feeling is being the, the feeling of having a sick kid in the middle of the night where I, I like my bed. I like sleep. I have earplugs and a pillow over my head and one of those heated up warmy things down by my feet and all the blankets, and I do not get out except for when that sound is not the sound of annoyance but the sound of I'm not okay. And... Whichever parent hears it knows, oh, it's me. It's time. This is not a blissful revelation, but there's very, very little ambiguity about who is supposed to be taking action, right? You know, you know it's you. And maybe you've had that experience in life in other ways where someone is, is there and has a need or something happens and you think someone should do something and you look around and you are the only someone. And you say, oh, it's me. Sometimes that's how we listen to God, because God just gets through to us one way or another. Or wears us down by those little nudges over and over and over until finally, fifth time or seven years later, we say, okay, I'm ready to have that conversation now that 12 people have asked me if I might be interested. Okay, God, I'm listening now. And then sometimes we listen only because we have tried to listen to every other possible voice and they've let us down, right? Sometimes we listen to the call of God because we have answered every other call that wasn't God's call and it took us nowhere and we have nowhere else to go. And then even that thing we were trying to avoid, that call of God, sounds like really good news. Because it's God 
who calls us, right? It's God who calls us again and again. And so we can listen and we can trust in a way that we don't always with other calls on our lives. But whether we are, are listening and hearing God's call because of faithful attention and wondering what God might be asking of us in this job or in this family or in this community, or whether we're listening because God has just come knocking often enough that we finally open the door, or whether we're listening because we have nowhere else to go, however we listen, we always also listen with other people. Samuel had Eli to go to, and Eli didn't catch on right away. But eventually, Eli said, you know, it's not indigestion. Go listen. That's God. And sometimes we need someone to tell us, you know, that sounds like a great plan that Erica made. What does that have to do with what God is calling us to? We need other people to help us listen and recognize the voice of God and to see how it fits with what we are supposed to be doing as God's people. So I think the question for us today is, are you listening, right? Whenever God calls us, and he does it again and again, sometimes in those big dramatic ways that send people across the ocean, and mostly in really quiet ways that, that make us look at the caller ID and go, yeah, i got to pick it up. However God calls us, it is Jesus who is calling us, right? So the words from Jesus are, follow me. Not go over there and try a scary thing by yourself. Follow me. Jesus is always there. Jesus already went ahead. And so whatever it is that God is calling us into, big or small, Jesus is already there. And God didn't call Samuel because he somehow was amazing. You wonder if God called Samuel because he was just the available person. God is the one who's going to do the work. Samuel is the one who's along for the ride. God is the one who's going to do the work. We're the ones who get to be there to witness it. So as we have a minute of silence, I'd invite you just to think, maybe to think about how you might sleep in the temple, to think about what practices you have in your life that make room for God, or maybe to think about that nudging that's been bugging you, and, and just listen. You might even kind of close your eyes and say, speak, Lord, for your servant is listening.